well, it's going to be a huge meeting at, at Fairy House. And the Hatton's Grace is certainly one of the big three highlights of the race. And Monksland is a, is a horse that's undoubtedly caught the eye. And, you know, he must he must get the yard pretty excited here, Noel. Yes, he's a, he's a very nice horse. He's, he has... Um, He's only had uh, four runs over hurdles. Um, he won his bumper, and then he had he had won a maiden hurdle and a grade two. Then and then he was third to Simon Sagan Cheltenham. He came back and he he didn't get a chance. He gave his joint a bit of a, a, a rap after Cheltenham, and he didn't get a chance to run in Punchestown. So he was rested over the summer and came back and won in Down Royal in a second season uh, conditioned hurdle. Won pretty well. And everything's gone pretty good since then. And he's heading now to the big boys again in the Hatton's Grace. Um, it'll be a tough enough ask for him now. There's no question about that because Vola Lavadetti has to give her weight. And, and there's also a thousand stars there as well. And, you know, there's, there's, there's good stuff in it. There certainly is that. And they're obviously, they, they've had more races under their belt, more experience. But he's obviously pretty savvy if he can go and, and do what he did at the festival, you know, finish. I mean, he finished well behind Simon Sig. So, you know, is, is he a horse that you describe as, as, I guess, sort of mentally sort of switched on to handle the, the tougher thing? Well, I hope so. He's, he's, been, he's been quite impressive in his work, any work he's done. He's not, he, his, when he's doing his canters, that you wouldn't really notice him in the, in the string. But uh, when, he's, when he's been on the grass and he's worked on the grass, he's been, he's been good. And his races have been good. Um, he was in the, the Cheltenham race. He, he got a little bit hampered at the second last when, when um, I can't remember the horse's name, fell or Dennis O'Regan was riding it. It fell at the second last. And he got into a bit of trouble over that. So he was poss- possibly a little further behind than he should have been. Now, obviously, it didn't make any difference to Simon Sig was going to win anyway. But he, he may well have been second, I think, had he not run into the, the trouble at the second last. But we're hoping he can up himself to that. To, to the top level now. Moving on then to the Drinmore, another highlight race. Uh, sort of Destiny probably won't go for it, a winner the other day, but Texas Jack should should take up the mantle. Yeah, I like Texas Jack. He, like, he started off very well last year. He won a couple of good hurdles and won them well. Uh, he did fade a bit. He had a problem with a uh, casing spine behind, which we had a little bit of an operation done on. And it seemed to work for a while and then he, he went back into his old ways again and hanging and not being right. And he, he didn't finish the season as well as he started it. But he started off, uh, he's come out and he had a, se- a run over hurdles first. And he ran second to a good horse of Jesse's who was meeting him quite well at the weights. And then he went to Nace for an obvious chase, a beginner's chase, and had a great ding-dong battle with a, another good horse. And there were it was a good novice chase. Any of the beginner's chases we've been, that have been around at the moment have been good and he did it well jump good hopefully he'll do that again um i was very pleased with the way he worked the other day he worked great and he seems to be in real good shape it's it's a very again it's a very hot race like any time you go for a grade one race or hot race is a willie has won in it that uh won earlier earlier in the season or just uh, yeah he's he, he ran him in may i think he bolted up in a in a good chase in a, in a beginner's chase and then he obviously had a rest over the summer so he's coming out for his for next run and he's a French horse looks quite good um, but look I'm hoping we'll, we'll run a good race I don't think Sword of Destiny will run at this stage I left him in yesterday but really only because uh, just in case something happened or some, the race was really cutting up badly or something like that but uh, Gigginstown have have uh, have um, the one of the likely favourites in the race anyway so they so I think uh, my lad will be left at home In terms of your schooling facilities you talk about the beginners chases being hot the experience but having seen your facilities here I mean they are they are not going to be wanting for for fences to jump that's for sure No no we have a we have a very good a very good uh, uh, schooling facilities all right for both all weather and grass and and uh, which is a help because we don't have to go away to school and whatever and 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 uh, like over the years it's built up into a into a nice it it works out well. Owen Mack, we ought to mention who who goes who's entered for the bumper here and uh, there's no doubt he knows his way around Fairy House. Yeah, he was very good the day he won. He 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 um he absolutely bolted up um from a horse that Tony Martin thought quite a bit of. Um, 
he seems well since he was very he was very lazy through the race that day until she sort of picked him up. She said she didn't really think she was going anywhere, and when she sort of said go to him, he bolted away. But in his work, he's been he's been doing that the, the couple of times he worked before he ran first. He he he'd been quite good, and whereas we hadn't maybe tried him against real good horses, he he everything he worked with he was seemed to handle them very easy. And he worked again on Tuesday, and and we're happy with him, and uh, hopefully he'll run a big race. And Ned Buntline, another one who's you know who's who's very impressive on his on his last bumper win, uh, could be set to make a, his hurdles debut. Yeah, it's possible he'll run in the in the um, maiden hurdle on the first day. It's two two, which is maybe not ideal. I prefer it. we're going two miles, but it's a good track, and and we've been we've been short of. Uh, reasonable ground to run on to be honest for the last uh, while so it looks like he may go there he's an exciting horse he's a horse we think a lot of and we're very hopeful that he'll be a top horse so if he turns up on the on the day uh, I think it's pretty it'll be him or or um, Ali Cascade who is an equally good horse well it's an, we don't know which of them is the best because we don't work them against each other but uh, both good horses Ali Cascade got touched off by Jetski who has advertised the form well and who will be one of the fancied ones in the Royal Bond so uh, I think it'll probably be um, Ned Buntline that'll run on the, in the first race on, on Saturday and, and jockey wise Paul Cobbery was back in the wars again but he's, he's set to be back this week so, so fingers crossed you'll have him back for the big meeting yeah, I spoke to him there this morning and uh, he said he's going to ride tomorrow. So uh, obviously he's happy with himself uh, because he rides one of the beginners chase tomorrow and he's he's uh, he's obviously happy with himself. So so uh, he's can't wait to get going again. How, how long has he actually been riding for you now? Sort of as essentially the stable jockey, I suppose. Oh God, I don't know. He must be with me. He's, <laughs> he, he, I don't know. He's probably... He's probably 37 or 8. I suppose he's 38. And he came to me when he was 16. So he had two years in England then when he went over to ride for, for Robert Ogden. Uh, and then he came back to me again and he's been with me ever since. He's been with me. Like, I mean, even when he was in England, he used to come home and ride for me at the weekend. So I, he's been basically been riding for me for that length of time. And Nina obviously does. She, you know, she rides... I suppose most of the bumper horses really as well, and I know that she's you know a big fan of Ned Buntline as well. Yeah, look, he, he, he's an impressive horse watching him work. He was impressive when he won, and he's an impressive horse to look at as well. He's a big, big horse, and he's he's he's, he's a nice horse to look at. Um, he, yeah, she Nina rides all the bumper horses, and she rides for she rides out for three days a week, and uh, uh, it's a pleasure to have her around the place. Nina, she's just she's always in good humour, and she's and she's a bloody great judge of work as well. And back to the Fairy House meeting, looking forward to obviously what's to, to come for this weekend. But in the past, what would be some of your, your standout memories, maybe good and bad? Yeah, well, I suppose Johnny Setaside was, he won the Drinmore for us. And I think I'd, I'd have won it before that. It mightn't have been a great one at the time with a horse called Beck the Road. But Johnny Setaside was a great day because he was belonging to three great friends of mine. And that was, that was a... a um, a great day winning that and then we had uh we had um another um and then in the last number of years things have been that's back when johnny's back a bit but in the last number of years we've been lucky enough there in those races we had i remember winning the two two great ones in the one day uh with watson lake and and uh i think it was muirhead that won the other one that day 